Hey everyone, my name is Adi. In this tutorial, we will talk about how to add figures to an artwork, what are the proportions of the body, how to paint people in motion, and more. We will use watercolor to paint small figures that are simplified. The rules that we will learn today will be useful for creating more complicated and detailed people too. Proportions When painting people or animals, the first thing that you should ask yourself is how long is the body in relation to the head. To measure the length of the body, use the size of the head. Most people tend to paint the size of the head too big. If you want to achieve a realistic result, it's better to paint adults with bodies that is 7 or 8 times the size of the head. In cartoons, comics, anime and manga, they usually make the head bigger so it will be easier to see the facial expressions. Whilst in fashion illustrations, they usually make the body longer to put more emphasis on the clothing. After you decide the size of the figure, one option is to divide it to seven or eight sections or even an easier option, divide it into two, then divide the upper half into two, and again divide the upper half into two. This will be the size of the head. I think it's better to start from practicing simple poses. Let's paint a man first. You can use spray bottle to wet the watercolor. Paint a dot for the head. Now I will add the shirt. People tend to paint the shoulders too small. They are three heads wide. I leave a little space between the torso and the middle line. The arms continue beyond the middle line. People tend to make the arms too short, but the arms should be able to touch the legs. I start to draw the pants above the middle line. The crotch, the point where the legs connect to each other, is located in the middle. It's better to let the colors bleed into one another. Let's paint a woman. I start to paint in the same technique. Women are in average shorter than men, but if we will use the previous proportion and paint a shorter figure, then we will get two men in different heights. I actually want to paint the men and the women in the same height, so it will be easier to see the difference in the proportion. Women have shorter torso, upper part, and longer legs in relation to the body. So I make the shirt and the arms a little bit shorter. The crotch is higher than the middle line. This is the main difference in proportion between men and women. There are other differences. Women tend to have shoulders that are a bit thinner. 
and a little longer neck. But when painting tiny figures, I think these kind of things are insignificant. I kept it as simple as possible, but making this kind of V-shape where the shirt only touches one side can be cool. Most people in the streets are going to be walking around, sitting on a bench, and not just standing still. So let's talk about other poses figures in motion. When people walk, not just the legs move. The shoulders can be in a diagonal line. And especially the pelvis. One side is going to rise in order to lift the leg. When someone is going towards us or away from us, it's good to make one leg longer than the other. That way, it looks like it's closer to us. The arms too are moving. One arm is more at the front, more in motion. The other is at the back. Can you see this trapeze shape? Let's paint two figures walking. To practice painting walking figures, you can also look at fashion magazines. Another good way to practice drawing body in general is looking at sculptures. When adding the second figure, it's good to leave a white line between the figures in a certain place, but to let them blend into one another in other places. I made the further figure higher. The head is above the head of the closer figure, but it isn't always like that. It depends on the height of the people, whether the street is flat or in a slope, and also where we are in relation to the figures. In other words, the perspective. Let's paint a person with a dog.
If you want to add tiny details, like the leash, use a double zero brush. It's not necessary to draw the entire leash, even showing part of it can be sufficient. Especially if the background is busy, it might be better to keep things minimal. Let's draw a figure from the side, and this time we will add shadow too. This person is looking down, so the head is bending. After painting the arm, I add the color of the face to create a section of skin. It's a cool way to create short sleeves or rolled up sleeves. In this pose, it's easier to see how far the feet can be from one another when someone is walking. I paint the shadow and make it connected to the legs. I also create a suggestion of another hand. It's better to let the paint dry if you want to create accurate small details like that backpack. Let's paint a group of people talking together. When a group of people talk together, they stand in a way that they could see one another. I decided to locate their heads in a triangle. This time we will paint them from a bird's eye view, so the head is going to be closer to the shoulders. You can give the people in the front brighter colors, that way they will pop out even more. I'm adding the shadow.
Last but not least, let's draw a person sitting. I paint the head and crossed arms. You can add a darker color in it, so it will look like there's a shadow. The figure has a bag and rests the hands on it. The bag covers part of the legs, so I paint around it. When someone is sitting, the distance between the head and the feet becomes much shorter. The legs are in an L shape. I add the shadow underneath the bench and the bench. I think it's good to let the colors of the figure bleed into the bench. Practice makes perfect. The more figures you paint, the better they will turn out, and the more you will enjoy adding them to your paintings. There are many reasons why to add small people. Adding figures to your painting is a good way to add touches of color, a sense of movement, and interest. You can use figures in different sizes to emphasize the perspective. We can also understand the space better if we compare buildings to the size of the people. And in addition, figures can make a place look lively. It gives an experience of visiting a real place with people that each has his own story. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you don't want to miss out new tutorials, then make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.